Where's my drink? Oh, I found it. I found it. I found it. Nice and subverted. Hold on. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. I love that my career literally requires at least three drinks before I do anything. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mike MGTV, where I continue to lie to you, where I pretend everything looks good from the waist up, but from the waist down, it's still easy access. Nothing's changed. We're on brand still. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but one thing I've been doing a lot lately is bartending videos, alcohol content, mixology videos. That's a lie. I am not a mixologist. I never claimed to be a mixologist. I don't fully know what I'm doing. I see a lot of comments where people ask, oh, are you a bartender now? Is this a bartending channel? Is this what this whole thing is about? No, I'm not trying to be a basic bitch and teach you how to make cocktails. There's a million people out there doing that already. I'm more like, the Karen Walker, I guess, of YouTube. Honey, I'd suck the alcohol out of a deodorant stick. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> Explain. I'm somebody who likes alcohol. I know what I'm talking about. I know how to party. I also know how to seem rich. I'm also involved in the queer lifestyle. I'm also a huge cunt. Okay. <laughs> People just started asking me, like, what do you do on your channel? And I have no answer. <laughs> I guess, in a way, I'm kind of like, if Jenna Marbles met Jeffree Star, but Jenna Marbles was much, much, much less successful, and Jeffree Star was like an alcoholic instead of a makeup artist. Does that make sense? Yeah. Great. <laughs> so like I said, do I fully know what I'm talking about when it comes to mixology and professional bartending? No, I've got fired from almost every job I've ever had, but that's not because I was a bad bartender. I was stealing. I wasn't stealing, I gave away a shot. I had permission to give it away though. I'm still kind of pissed about it. I wasn't stealing. I shouldn't say I was stealing. I got fired for the same reason. What were you stealing? I wasn't stealing. Why do I keep Allegedly. saying that? <laughs> Allegedly. I asked if I could give away a free shot. The manager said yes, and I gave away a free shot. It was just a free shot of Don Julio 1942. And then I got fired for not specifying which alcohol the free shot was, which has never been a rule ever Anyway, and then the other time I got fired was because I got publicly naked, but like, it's not a show. Like, get off my dick. Every other bar I've ever worked at loved me. Rave reviews. <laughs> you quit before you could get fired. I got fired for giving away a shot of Fireball. Oh, God. <laughs> So I'm not here to tell you how to be professional. I'm not here to tell you how to make like a fancy cocktail because a lot of mixologists on YouTube have like a stick up their ass. I feel like they're all full of shit. They're all telling you guys that you need this and you need that. And they're all like, they're all trying to be like hoity-toity. Everyone's like, I'm a mixologist. Like they're better. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like they're all out here like spritzing their cocktails with peels and like, doing all that crazy things with all these herbs and shit. Like, no, I, I, that is not, that is not me. So to anybody I offend that is like, you're not a mixologist, you don't know what you're talking about. You're absolutely fucking right. But I have somehow successfully managed to make a great career off of fucking faking it. I'm like every porn star before OnlyFans. <laughs> so in today's video, I decided I would let you guys know what kind of bar equipment you actually need if you're an aspiring bartender or if you're looking to make the perfect cocktail, the perfect cocktail at home. I can't even talk. I've had like seven of these. It went from three to seven real quick there. You're not my boss. I'm gonna let you know everything you need to be a prepared bartender or make your own cocktail at home. I'm gonna let you know what's necessary, what's not necessary, or how to substitute things if you don't have it on hand. The first thing I'm sure everybody thinks of when they think of making a cocktail is the shaker. This little bitch right here, which I have lost pieces to because I literally never use it. <laughs> if you can, I say go ahead and get it for your house because it does make a difference. You really only need one of these. Why was there lube in here? <laughs> I'm gonna put this that's aside. Your, that's your shaker. I'm gonna put it aside for now. A cocktail shaker. I would say, yes, it is actually necessary. Because some cocktails you can't just build in a glass. Some things you need to shake. You don't need to overdo it like they do at those like fucking fancy ass bars. What? What? I was gonna sing. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your shaker. Mix that cocktail. <laughs> You're right up there with, what's her name? What's her name? Click them keys and Google me. Click them keys and Google me. Doja Cat? No, not Doja Cat. <laughs> Kim Zosia. Oh, don't be tardy for the party. <laughs> That's your equivalent right now. We'll get to stirring in a second, but when it comes to shaking cocktails, you're gonna need one of these. 
When it comes to a strainer, when you're at home, one of these tops are like perfectly fine. When you're at a bar, this is gonna be a bitch. These kind of tops, will fucking get stuck on here. And it is the bane of my fucking existence. Because what happens is when you put ice in here and you shake it, the metal gets cold and then they get stuck and then you can't get it off and it's a bitch. So instead, when you're working at a bar or if you wanna make your life easier at home, there is a top strainer that you can get, which I don't actually own. And you don't actually need to have because there are ways around it. If you don't have a strainer, here's what you could do. The dirty way, which no bartenders ever want to actually acknowledge, is to put one cup into the other and just pour your drink out like this. <laughs> or you literally just put one cup in the other way and you strain it out like this. This way you're catching all the ice and the shit inside, but you're leaving just enough room so that the liquid can fall through. Is it as effective as an actual strainer? No. Is it great for anyone on a budget? Absolutely. Because when you're working at a bar or you have problems like I do, you don't have time to waste. I don't have time to go looking for a strainer. I have what's here. I have what's readily available. So you gotta be innovative. That's why it says it on my fucking resume in the first place. Innovative. Innovative, word of the day. Bold print right at the top. Hell yeah. Next, and I'm surprised we actually have this. I didn't know we had this and I found it in the cupboard. A muddler. Do you know we have a muddler? I've been using the chicken mallet <laughs> this whole time. Cause I didn't know we had this and I wasn't about to waste $5 to buy it. If you have a muddler available or you can afford one, I think this is great to have handy. If you don't, there are ways around it. You might get in trouble with the health department if you use this hack. That being said, I've also used this hack everywhere. What I would do is I would take three plastic shot glasses, smush them together, and use that as a muddler. <laughs> because to be honest, literally anything could be a muddler. Anything could be a muddler as long as it's fucking firm. Yeah, your dick could be a muddler. I was about to say it. Oh. <laughs> and there are some things that you think you need to muddle, but you actually don't. For example, blueberries and raspberries. If you put blueberries and raspberries or anything very like fragile in a cup with ice, guess what? When you shake it, it'll get muddled automatically. Shaking fragile ingredients like blueberries and raspberries and shit like that with ice will get muddled in the process. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who has some kind of scientific evidence to be like, you're stupid because it doesn't actually do this and X, Y, and Z. Fuck off. <laughs> it has worked for me making my own cocktails. I haven't noticed a fucking difference and I'm not here to make any kind of like scientific or factual statement. I'm just saying what worked for me. And that's that on that. A bar spoon. I don't have a fucking bar spoon. We have a fucking bar spoon? Shut up, we have a bar spoon? Why do we have a bar spoon? Cause it's my, that's in my set. Give me it, give me it. You know what this is? You know what this is? A stirrer. It's a complete waste of fucking money. <laughs> what are you using this for? I would love to know. I would love to know what you're using this for that a normal spoon can't do. Well, it fits all the way to the bottom of the glass. Bottom of what? Bottom of what? The glass. What glass? Grab a glass in the cupboard right now that you can't stir with a normal spoon that you need this for. What glass? Do you need something this long? This? One of these? So you can go like that? You know what else you can do? Swivel it, bitch. Waste of fucking money. This? Bullshit. Throw it away. Again, is there something that this probably does that I don't know? Maybe. But in almost a decade of bartending, I have never found this useful or have never been like, oh, what do I do? I left my spoon at home. You know what I mean? There's always something else you can use, like um, a straw. No way, a straw's not strong enough. A straw's not strong enough to stir something? No, that's really? metal. Really? This is 2021, bitch. Straws are metal now. Find me the bar that's giving out metal straws. Does it bar. matter? Does it matter? I have worked at numerous bars. You could stir all that shit with a plastic straw. Every single cocktail I've been able to stir with a plastic straw. Not at the bars I've worked at. <laughs> okay, well, you have taken many drinks from me stirred with a plastic straw. This, this is to look fancy. This is to look nice. Which I get aesthetics and like you want your place to be like highbrow and look fancy. Which, if that's the case, then yeah, this makes sense if you're trying to look fancy. But in all honesty, unnecessary. And that's just my opinion on that.
<laughs> I'm gonna piss off so many mixologists. I hope I do too. I hope people come at me and being like, you don't know what you're talking about because they're absolutely right. Oh, you haven't gotten enough attention this week? Oh. A bottle opener, whether it's a beer bottle opener, a wine bottle opener, I think is actually very necessary. If you're a bartender, Always have one of these handy. I honestly recommend having at least two handy because you will lose them. There's also the littler ones available. I'll put a picture somewhere because I don't think I have one readily available. Those I also recommend having because they open the beer bottles and they open the wine bottles, all that fun shit, great. Don't ever, no, don't ever, ever bring one of these to a job. At home, one of these things, absolutely fine. If you're working at a bar, I will make fun of you. <laughs> a cutting board. Do we have a cutting board? I think we have a cutting board. It's dirty. <laughs> Honestly, any hard surface can be a cutting board. To be honest, if it's something that you can't put like scratches in or edges in, it would actually be better. For me, that's fine. But I will say this, a health department hates wooden cutting boards because the edges, the cuts that obviously happen in a cutting board, cause you, guess what? Cut on it. They actually mark points off for it because bacteria grows in the cuts. It's a little extreme, it's really annoying, but I have worked in many bars where they're like, if the health department comes in, throw it away. Just throw the cutting board away. If you have like a marble one or any kind of like flat surface, same shit. Just any kind of like flat surface that you can cut shit on, just use that. Oh, this next one. I hate this next one. I'm not even gonna pretend. This shit, these little measuring thingies, go fuck yourself. Absolutely go fuck yourself. These are the worst things in the world. And I know there are bartenders and mixologists out there that are gonna raise eyebrows at me and hate me for saying this, but these are literally pointless. I know there's like a war on people that like to measure their drinks versus people that like to just free pour. But here's the honest to God truth. If I'm trying to make a lot of cocktails fast, I'm not gonna worry about this. I'm not gonna reach for it when I could literally count. One, two, three, four two ounces. I know some people do one eye, two eye, three eye, but that gets confusing because that's an odd number. I don't know why you would do that when you could just do an even number with four. You could also do one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. It doesn't matter whatever pace you go at. It's one, two, three, four. Count like that and that's how you measure out your alcohol. Each count is a half ounce. Most drinks will have at least two ounces unless you're making a cocktail that is heavily alcohol, like a martini or whatnot. Bars use this because A, they're either tight on money and really need to like measure out the alcohol that they're serving out because they're worried about their bartenders pouring too heavy or whatnot. Or the really fancy bars use this because those bars have mixologists that will sit there and tell you how important it is to precisely measure out each cocktail because every measurement counts and it's so intricate. At the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking, like literally, that little sliver difference is not gonna fucking matter. You're not gonna tell the difference because those fancy fucking cocktails are 80% ice to begin with. Can you imagine having to make an AMF with that? <laughs> if you're free pouring, something I would advise you to have is a pour spout, I think. I think that's what this is called. I'm not necessarily sure, but I feel like it's a good guess. You put it right in the top of your bottle. Also, you're never like pouring a 1942 like this. You're drinking this straight out the bottle or pouring shots. I'm just using this as a demonstration. If you're not at a bar and you're just at home, here's what I do. I'm not using this as like a demonstration. I'm not telling you that this is actually right or this is how you do it. I'm just letting you know what I do. After I fill my cup up with ice, I usually fill it up like a third way with alcohol. I feel like that's good. That's a good amount. Uh -huh. The only other thing I really worry about is a flask. I feel like this is definitely necessary. It comes in really great handy for things like Weddings or funerals, PTO meetings, you know, the basics. PTA. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I got kids, fuck them kids. And that's all you really need when it comes to like bar equipment. There's a lot of other substitutes that you can come up with. Really, you just have to be innovative. It's on your resume for a reason. And I know most of you have it on your resume and you're just bullshitting, but like it actually pays off to be innovative. Even if you don't have a fucking like Beer bottle opener, I've opened beer bottles with lighters before. I've opened a bottle of wine with a shoe and you slam it against the wall enough times and it pops open. I have met somebody that can open a beer bottle with their ass cheeks though. 
That was impressive. And if you're somebody that is interested in stacking your own bar, really the only thing you need is the assortment of alcohols. It doesn't matter what kind of alcohol, obviously that's your own personal taste and do your research. You should have a little bit of vodka, rum, tequila, whiskey, all the basics. I would have the basic mixers like grenadine or maybe like an orange decor, peach schnapps, curacao. Yeah, the blue one. Yeah. <laughs> Blue Curacao. Oh God, Mikey, no. <laughs> but once you have all the basic alcohols, really the best thing to make cocktails with is fresh fruit and herbs. And making them fresh will always taste better in the end. But of course, you know you could always buy the cheap stuff at the store. Like literally, if you wanna buy a really cheap version of sweet and sour mix, you can buy lemonade. It's, that's sweet and sour mix. If you guys would like a more in-depth video on how to stock a home bar, let me know in the comments below and also let me know any other kind of bartending questions you have or cocktail mixology questions you have. Again, I'm trying to do something different here on YouTube that you're not readily gonna find because everybody in the bar community and the alcohol community is so fucking pretentious. It's alcohol. We're all here for one thing, to get fucked up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. We're trying to make something that tastes like shit not taste so shitty. It doesn't have to smell like fucking flower farts. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future videos. I put it out weekly every Tuesday and Thursday. Be sure to follow me on all forms of social media. You can find me everywhere at MikeMGTV. Special thank you to Matt DeVoe and Adam Levine for retweeting me on Twitter. If you would like a special shout out in one of my videos, be sure to retweet this video, especially if you quote tweet it. Those are the ones I actually recognize the most. And if that's all, my name is MikeMGTV and you're fucking welcome. Do you want Say bye, Mikey. Bye. Bye. <laughs>